surprise, motherfucker. What a sexy intro that is. Nice one, Sai, mate. Appreciate you and appreciate the guys East Podcast Nation for that. Uh, I am Rob. This is the Flower Hour brought to you by East Podcast Nation. Uh, I am with my son to my ring. He is the thunder to my lightning. He is Mr. Matthew Angel. How are you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, good, Matt. Good. You all right? Yeah, so I'm running out of duets now, so I really, really, really badly need someone to... Well, I'll just use what Sire put on the intro, Superstar Matty Angel. That's quite uh, quite fitting, really. No, I think he was lying to you there. <laughs> um, but um, welcome, mate. Yeah, so I've seen kind of stuff after this. Um, obviously, you were there. Yeah, we'll, well. We'll, we'll, we'll jump in straight in then, where we are. So uh, you were there, obviously, yesterday. Um First things first, atmosphere. Uh, dead from a Cardiff point of view, but really, I think disappointing um, numbers wise again, but kind of expected now, really, where we are, and you know, not really much to play for now. But you'd still like to think we could get some more bums on seats. Um, Sunderland brought down um, a decent traveling support, they were quite loud and vocal throughout. A um, couple of quiet times, but that was to be expected, really. But um, they were quite noisy, in fairness. I was quite uh, impressed with them. Yeah, in fairness, with Sunderland, they always bring it, and they. I think it's it's common with the North, whether it's Sunderland, um, Newcastle, or Borough. You know, I think they're renowned for yeah. for bringing a lot of fans with them. In fairness, so um, yeah, it's. Um, I I didn't granted didn't see much of the game in fairness, but from from what I read, seen we started uh, off quite well to be fair the first ten minutes, and then they had that penalty in, and it was just backs against the walls. We just they were first to everything. We were just second best to absolutely everything, and it we didn't deserve anything out of the game whatsoever. It was just it was a really 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 poor performance to be honest, and um, just not good enough. I was really, really disappointed to the extent that my boy and his buddies who we take with us at half time said, Can we go now? And I was like, Not yet. But I would have, yeah, it was just disappointing. It was a really poor performance. A lot of booze at half time, and final whistle. But um, yeah, disappointing. Disappointing day. It was open for more of a reaction after. Obviously, the Swansea game before the international break, you know, thinking there'd be players coming back in and chomping at the bit. Granted, I know we had a few players away on international duty, but obviously the, the majority of the squad would have had a couple of days off, maybe, and come back angry. Um, and just didn't materialise, but then... I've, I've, I've tried my best to back bullet as much as I can, but... You know, when things are going wrong, I just can't see. He just doesn't. He just doesn't know how to change things, or he obviously knows how to change things, but he's not changing things early enough. If that makes sense, you know. I granted he made two changes early second half straight away, but I don't know. Just I'm slowly losing confidence. Yeah. In him. Um. And I think, you know, he's putting nails in his own coffin, if that makes sense, in the sense that obviously he's fighting for a new contract as well. But I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you think if ever was a time to... I mean, there's no good time to lose a game 
especially a derby. But um, you think the best time to lose one is just just before the national break. So you know you got a week, ten days, or whatever with the the squad who's remained um, to to iron it out and, and and work from you know to progress from there. And like I said, from what I've seen, it just literally looked to be just a follow on from. That that shitty day that we 100%. 100%. I thought S Brand was poor yesterday. You know, he's slipping over just poor performance. Um, yeah, Nat Phillips strong again. He looked decent. If it weren't for him, we probably would have conceded a couple more, to be honest. Um, and Sunderland, considering they haven't won a game or that you know, they were on a seven, seven, and and one for seven games or whatever, you would have you would have thought they were there for the taking, but you know, they, they controlled the ball, the midfield area, similar to like Wales against Poland, where Poland seemed to get on top in midfield. They just bossed the game and you know, I don't think the Sunderland goalkeeper he could have left his gloves in the changing rooms, to be honest. It was it was that poor. And I don't want to be negative negative but it was that type of thing and you know it's all good coming on and doing these podcasts saying good things but i you know we got to talk about the negatives as well and it was negative it was it was disappointing yeah i think you said uh, in a comment previously um on whatsapp whatever that as one of the worst performances you've seen in a long while um and, and you're right like the thing is we touched upon in a pre-show uh, back last week that um, well, I touched upon about the Sunderland's results, etc. Maybe I jinxed them, but Sunderland were in a horrific form. They were very, very poor form they're going into this. You know, it says it all when uh, Sunderland beat Cardiff and yet they're still not above Cardiff on the table as a result of it. So, you know, they're, they're clearly not um, an aspiring top six team at this point in the season. Um and by all accounts, sounds like kind of a damn tools, and just they probably know that they're safe. I, I, I don't know, directly speaking, is that what we're thinking now? That you know, what we end of March, and it seems like after watching the Swansea game and hearing and seeing bits of the, the Sunderland game yesterday, have we just thought, fuck it, we're safe now? Yeah, and it was a comment I seen. Yesterday. It was a comment I seen or you heard yesterday, where you know with some of the players already on the beach with their flip flops and sunglasses on already, type of thing. And you'd like to think the professionalism in the players now, and you know the coaches and managers wouldn't allow that to kind of happen. But you can't help think that as well. Really, is you know it's not a, it's not something you want to think. But you know potentially some players might have that type of mentality. I don't know. I'd like to think they, you know, they haven't. Um, but some definitely will, mate. Let's be real. Some only see football as just a, a hobby, which is fine. Um, a few players have come out previously and said that they, in no short term, they couldn't give a flying shit about um, football. They just see it as a hobby. They do what they got to do. They turn up, do what they, what's asked of them, and then go home. Yeah. Um, and I think that says a lot about the modern era of football that we live in. Um, unfortunately, uh, there was a, not to go off sidetrack, uh, there was an interesting um conversation that Mirzlav Closer, one of the best footballers in my era growing up, I think he's still, if not the all time record goal scorer in World Cups. Um, one of the reasons he retired was because, um, not see his age, of course, but another uh, reason why he retired was because that players were too, he was playing with at the time, was so much more concentrating on whether their um, their socks matched their boots or, or and things like that. And they questioned closer when he was tidying up the, the balls at the end of training, for example, little things like that. And I believe it. I believe that's the case. There's no doubt about it. That happens. And yeah. it's, I, I'd i love for them to bring back the 
you know, it was renowned, wasn't it, in, from what I gather in the 90s, etc., where the academy boys, the youth boys, they cleaned the boots of the seniors in the 80s, etc. I'm sure it went on beyond that as well. Then the boot cleaning and things like that. And I just think that it's an easy, not an easy money, but you know what I mean? It's yeah, a, yeah, it's only, you yeah, you've got to you earn your stripes and cut the, you know, and that's the mentality of, let's say, kids nowadays, right? But um, they, they are kids compared to my age now, and you either forget sometimes how, well, young, how young they are, like, and how old I am. But um, I don't know whether it's the mentality of youngsters nowadays that they expect everything given to them on a plate. Because let's be honest, they get paid, you know, very, very well to do a, a job or sport that they love doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know... I, you know, it does get to me sometimes when fans can be negative, but at the end of the day, they're paying their hard earned money to go down and support. And when you can see there's no effort or a lack of effort, then from some players, it, you can understand to a certain degree how frustrated they can get. I'm, I'm still under the thing that I would never boo or thing, but. Oh, you know, at the end of the day, the times we're living in, in at the moment, times are hard, you know, and it costs a lot of money to go and watch a game of football now, especially if you've got kids as well and you're taking them and they want this and that. And But, yeah, still not, still not going to stop me going to Coventry on Monday, though. Yeah, good man. Well, that's it. Like, you are, like, the epitome of it. Like, um, you know, I've not been down for a little short while, um, but like seeing you go, you obviously go your season ticket. Our Joshy boy has got a season ticket down there as well as class. Like you know, even with the, the crap that's that's followed with him, we've been watching it in recent times, and I, I think it's just awesome, mate. Um, and, and you can understand sometimes when him and his muckers want to leave at half time or whatever when you're yeah. watching them the drivel we're playing. So that's why you're watching. Sorry, so. Um, I thought we'd just jump to the, the comments just for a sec. And uh, Mr. Danny Jones, welcome, mate. Thanks for joining us. Have you recovered from a South Wales derby defeat? Um, don't really talk about that, never happened. So, thank you for that, Danny. <laughs> um, I don't think we ever recover from them results anyway. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, no, I appreciate the comment. And obviously, Danny's obviously a Swansea supporter. And just going back to that game, they bat, would not well, battered us really. Should have been six or seven. So let's not shy away from it. No, onwards and upwards, mate. Um, so going back to the game yesterday, um, selection, what's your thoughts on it? Was you happy with it? I, I mean, I personally thought it weren't a bad one. No, I would have probably have liked to have had um, Siopis or Turnbull in there, really, rather than playing roles and Wintel. Um, for whatever reason, I didn't think Caldwell had a great game yesterday. No. Um, but then you can only play with what's around you, and I just don't think we had enough quality out on the field yesterday and players who were out on the field who were performing. Um, I know Bowler was picked again yesterday, um, I'm not going to rant and rave about that because I'm not going to waste my time, really. You know, exactly he, had some right. good, he had some good runs at times, but I just don't think he got that passion to want to wear the shirt, if I'm honest. That's the best way I can explain it, really. And I don't know whether he's because he's a lone player, but you'd think now, if he is a lone player, yes. is his shop window now to be putting the performances in? Um, and there was a conversation I was having with another fan um, at half time yesterday, where um, you know he just doesn't have that confidence to go past people, and it's something we've said numerous times on you. He's always cutting back inside, looking to pass it back inside, or w- try and win the free kick. Um, but he got the ability to beat people, so just don't know why he doesn't do it. Well, no, I think that's a very, very good, um, you know, check over him. I think that. Josh Bowler is a bit of a journeyman now. I think he's turning into he he's not really found a home for for a little while. I'm just looking over his appearances and whatnot, mate. He's not played more than looking at it more than fifty times for a team. 
um, which I think it says a lot, doesn't it, really, mate? Yeah. Um, he's all of his career, really, he's been playing in a championship and, and the premiership. He's, he spent a little time in, in Greece. Um, I wonder, mate, for his own good, you know, not for Cardiff, because he's definitely not going to be there next season. For his own good, he's going to be better off dropping down a couple of divisions. If he still yeah. can, if he still wants to play and want to become a successful or as successful as he can be footballer, I think he needs to drop down at least one division or potentially go and play in a league which is more suited to him. I think the SPL would be too physical for him. Um Obviously, we all know that the, the standard's not the best in, in the Scottish League, but I think that'd be too physical for him. Yeah, um, it's a difficult one with him because I just think sometimes, you know, is he doing that off his own back or is that a tactic the manager is telling him to try and play, cut back inside and try and win that free kick? Only I'm, I'm only saying that because, you know, over the last couple of years, we've been renowned, most of our goals come from set pieces and things. Are they looking for that? Do you know what I mean? We don't, we not, we're like Carl and Grant started up front yesterday. I know that's something we've been asking for and thing, but I don't think that worked. We just didn't have the creativity in midfield to um, give him the balls that he, he needed. Um, it was nice to see O'Dowder start yesterday. Yeah. Um, he come, he come drop back into left back second half for Esbrand. As I mentioned earlier, I thought he had a poor game. But um, just nice to see him having minutes out there. Looked dangerous at times and strong when he was on the ball. But again, just didn't have enough of it. Sunderland were, you know, worthy winners. To be honest, they 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 could have had a third goal a couple of times. Um, and yeah, just crap, really. Yeah. We won't dwell too much, and we'll keep it a bit short and sweet, guys, because we do appreciate you guys taking time out of your... It's bank holiday weekend, isn't it, Robert? Yes, it is, sir. Um, what? So, going a little bit away from the Cardiff for now, um, do you have any plans for uh, the rest of your bank holiday? I've been out with rugby today. The mighty penalty youth won 19-14 at Oakdale. Um, well, 14 nil down half time, so they come back. Fair play to the awesome. boys. Um, Joshy boy got football tomorrow. Yes, we have. So, flower in the nines. Yeah, if any of you are about, I know a lot of you guys who who, who watch uh, from favour of field, but um, get yourselves down there if you fancy a football treat on a Sunday, guys. We've got um, the uh, shop will be open. <laughs> um, Watch, we've got a friendly with uh, kindly friendly put in place with Penguin and Penguin Mouse, so that'd be a nice way for us Sunday to to go ahead. Um, when you've done all your uh, egg chasing, Easter egg ants, yeah, yeah, that's a way, mate. Um, but yeah, it's um, and obviously back again. We go on Monday, um, so leading us to Monday. Um, I'm not sure if Sai's going to do a review of this anyway, but we may as well talk about it now. Um, what's your thoughts then on Monday? Do we see many changes? I know it's a million dollar question at times. I think, isn't it? Where, yeah, where it's, it's steam difficult one now. Yeah, I think um, I think they probably will make changes. Turnbull and Siopis will probably come in. I think. Um, I think. I think it's a difficult place to go. Coventry always been a difficult place to go. Um, they are quite well supported as well, if I'm honest. So, yeah, it'll be a difficult. Uh, Difficult one on um, Monday. Um, I'd take a swift <laughs> one win up here any day of the week, but um, I don't know how they got off yesterday. Coventry, if I'm completely they honest, they won, mate. Did they? Or did they play? Huddersfield. Um, they scored. So yeah, they went two 0 up, and remember the name Reese Healy scored for Huddersfield, um, and then. Uh, yeah, they went end up scoring a third in added time. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one uh, on Monday. There's no doubt about it. Um, Coventry will be a different animal again. They are tinkering and 
tease in the the playoff positions at the, as it stands this seventh in the league. Yeah. Um, uh, so where we one, two, three, four. I just don't. I just four you know we got no, we got nothing to lose now. We're we're not going to hit the playoffs and we're not going to get relegated. So we got nothing. To, just go out and play football. Enjoy playing football. And it's just it was just so negative yesterday. The the passing backwards. You know the lack of pressing. It was just it was just so depressing the game to watch and it's just very frustrating again and. You know, if if we, if we were playing Sunderland away, you can understand. But we were at home, and it's just, yeah, it's just our our identity of. Well, I don't think we got an identity at the moment of the way we want to try and play football because there's nothing there, nothing there at all. It always seems to be the same thing at home, though, doesn't it? Like this season, we've been dog shit at home majority of the season, really. Um, I'm going to start in front of me, but I swear we probably picked up more points. On our travels than than we have at home. If Reese Davis Evans could be asked to tune in, then you'd have the answer for me, I'm sure. But um, I just don't know why. Like I was when I first started watching Cardiff um, many many moons ago. This is obviously back in the main park. There was a fortress. Like I think I started watching them when they were going through a run of like they hadn't lost a home game all season, and they were like moving into the next season, etc. you know? So, and that was quite a similar suit for years to come where Ninian Park and even Car City Stadium at, at times, you know, was a fortress where, you know, people, teams, sorry, beg your pardon, teams feared coming there, like they yeah. feared coming to Cardiff because the atmosphere and things like that. I know the atmosphere has changed. I know that... The setup for the the fans seating area is not great, um, which you and I have discussed. Many many other podcast shows have discussed as well, which I do think needs a a, a renovation. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Dalman will come on uh, his podcast nation uh, referenced it and mentioned something about it, but. I don't know. Well, obviously, it's nothing has happened since, so it doesn't look like anything is going to change with that. Um, it's just, it's, it just feels like it's quite disjointed, the the setup um, of the the fan location, and I just don't think it works properly personally. But like I said, you know more than me by a million miles because obviously you you're there, mate, rain or shine every single fucking home game. So. Fucking, you know, much, much more than me on that. But that's from the outside looking in. That's how it feels for me. That's how I know. Yeah, hundred percent agree with it. But, um, yeah, it'd, it'd be nicer just to have the away end. You know, you don't see much trouble now. In there's so much CCTV and stuff nowadays that you don't you don't get trouble. And I think it would cause it would cause it would have a better atmosphere if the fans were closer together. Obviously, we are close to the away fans in the family end. Um, and obviously, you know, complete opposite end of the pitch, then where all the noise comes from the Cardiff supporters in the Canton, really. Um, but you got a job to you're at the family end, it's just the away noise you do, you like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah, it's, it's one of them, innit? I can understand why they do it for security reasons and yeah. stuff, but yeah, that's like, the sole reason it has to be made, isn't it? That's yeah. got to be the sole reason, it's just from a security perspective. But the only reason why we're doing that is, is segregating because of that. Um, G. Parry, welcome, mate. Uh, Ninian was a tire ground, the ball bank paddock could definitely be intimidating. Yeah. Uh, but so we we won't drag on much longer, mate. If that's good with you, good with everyone. Yeah, that's all right, but I've got uh, plans. I've got the kids running right around the house, yeah. So um, keep it short and sharp. Um, like I said, I'm sure Sai will do a, a preview for. Commentary on Monday, and hopefully then I think I'm stay. I might be staying overnight up in commentary Monday with Josh anyway. So potentially Tuesday, then we'll have a catch up on uh, Monday's result. Perhaps yeah. I'm not sure. Unless I take the laptop with me, and perhaps we'll do it Monday <laughs> night. We can uh, we love the commitment, can, boy. Um, was I going to say? Yeah. So I think I said, is it next week? He said he's not around much, and so you might no, see. I him. think it's the week after. I think, but is it? 
Oh, well, yeah. so you might see a bit more of us anyway over the next week or so. Uh, people going on holidays and things like that. So, unlucky for you, all beautiful viewers, seeing my handsome face. Um, but what I was going to say, uh, so yeah, in case you don't get to do one beforehand, um, quick prediction for Monday, please. 1 0 Cardiff. Fingers crossed. Scorer. Um, I'm going to keep saying Callum O'Dowder. Callum O'Dowder. Oh, fair. I'm going to keep saying CO until he gets one. Um, so I'm going to go. So you're going 1 0 Cardiff O'Dowder. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go 2 1 Cardiff. CO. And Phillips. Yeah. And that's all. Let's all it's just a bit more of a positive one. It was like I said, it was it was negative, and I don't like to be too negative, but obviously it's it is what it is, isn't it? As the saying it, goes, it is what it is. It is literally that. It is what it is. Um shouldn't let football uh, control your emotions at times, unfortunately. It fucking does for me, sadly. Um yeah. it has the ability to ruin it things. Um but before we uh, wrap up there and call it a day. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. I uh, appreciate it. Like I say, it's an early one and a bit of a quick one. So thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, do all the usual shenanigans. Um, I suppose there's only one thing uh, left to say then, mate. Up a flower.